it's for real, man. Like they're in captivity, you know, and God needs them to pray <coughs> because it's at that point where He just He literally needs us to pray, you know. Right. Um, and not just people that we know, people that we don't know. Right. There's a lot of people that we intercede for we don't even know. But everybody in here, everybody in here knows somebody that needs help. Whether it's in the church, outside the church. And there, there's brothers and sisters out there that's in bondage. Whether it be addiction, <coughs> it might be mental oppression. Yeah. You know, and God needs us to pray. Yeah. You know, we need to pray for one another. We need to pray for leadership here. You know, we need to pray for the lead men of our crews. And we just need to pray, man. You know, so I was, the Lord reminded me uh, this morning on the way over here of Acts chapter 12 where Peter was in prison. You know, and the church started praying. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so important, the reason why I want everybody to come in here, I think it's important that we do this together. You know what I mean? When, you, when the church came together in one place, one accord, one mind, that's when God really began to move. You know, and it's pretty serious. I mean, people's lives are in the balance. Right. You know, you're talking about lives that, like the demoniac, that could go back into those old places and really, literally take over an entire region. That's how big this is. One person could go in and take over an entire region. One person that we pray for, if they get set free, could start a revival. Yeah. You know? But God needs us to pray. It's not something that He just sovereignly does. It's something that He's chosen to use us to pray. So the church is praying for Peter. He's locked up, physically locked up. An angel shows up, the chains are broke off, and he is released from prison. Y'all remember that? We looked at that Mm -hmm. probably a few weeks ago. And really, I see that in the Spirit. You know, as we come together and pray, supernatural things are going to start happening. And that's what we need, honestly. Because it's some of these people you know, I mean, it's beyond anything we can do in the natural, but we got prayer. And if that's the only thing we've got, we've got a good thing. His Amen. prayer is awesome. Amen. That's how God moves. Amen? Amen. So uh, I just want to keep that in mind as we go. We're going to go into worship. And as we're in worship, uh, think about somebody you can pray for. Don't even pray for yourself. Pray for other people. And the same thing that you're praying, man, that prayer, you're going to you're gonna reap whatever you sow. If you're praying for other people, man, you're going to reap a harvest in your own life. Come on. You're praying for people to have peace, and you're going to have peace. You're praying for people to get healed, you're going to receive healing. You're, you're praying for people to have clarity in their mind, you're going to have clarity in your mind. It's just a natural law of so many people. So let's just think about that today as we enter into worship, man. And You know, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of His people. That's right. That's right. So as we begin to give God praise, look, I know He's already here. I know mm-hmm. He's inside of every one of us. Come on. But He also likes to come down. He likes to bring His presence down and rest upon us. And when He does, He begins to do things in His presence, right? He begins to deal with darkness. Come on. He begins to deal with whatever thing we're dealing with, He begins to deal with it. Yeah. Lights up the shadows. It's like hitting that light on. As soon as you hit the light, what happens? Darkness. Gone. Gone. So let's worship God, man. Let's let's get our mind off ourselves. And let us, I say we. Let's get our mind off ourselves and let's think about somebody we can pray for. Think of somebody that's in the struggle. Go ahead. Uh, if y'all would, just lift up our brother, uh, Ryan Smallwood. Um, he had some old cases come back and he's got a newborn baby. He's probably about to have to go sit uh, for a little bit in the county. Um, but I mean, just pray for peace for him. Uh, it's just, he knows that he's got a purpose. If he does go sit down, you know, that, that he's going to be able to reach somebody there. But... Um, just an extra, like, double portion of peace, you know. Amen. Is that baby. <clears throat> we pray for somebody. We know who we pray for. Amen. All right, cool. Uh, you want to pray, Sam? Yeah. <laughs> Father God, we're just so thankful this Friday, Lord God. Uh, we're just thankful for, to be here, Lord God, this morning, Lord. Lord, we just uh, lift up this uh, time to worship you, Father God. Um, the name above all names, Lord. Let your let your word flow through us this morning like rivers of living water, Lord God. Let us uh let us lift up our praise and our prayer to you this morning, Lord God, and let it let it be interceding for 
for whoever we need to, Lord God, yes. just let it reach out and grab them by the heart strings, Lord God, and just we lift it up to you, we glorify you in every situation, Lord God, we, we love you, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen.
Thank mm -hmm. you.
from time to time just to kind of go over everything you're reading about, everything you're studying, so you can <clears throat> get a chance to just pour out, because that's important, you know what I mean? And then just get comfortable being up there and, you know, in the hot seat, so <laughs> it's going to help. And then remember the assignment this week, share the gospel with three people, pray for three people. Right. throughout the week so look for those opportunities and that, I mean it's not limited to that I mean if you want to pray for a hundred people you know what I mean Man. but um you know by now we should be I think after this week chapter 7 in the book yeah we've already read the book of Matthew we should be in the book of Mark That's right. 16 chapters we need to have it read by Tuesday and then of course the prayer every day so and uh you know do it in God's grace. Don't don't strive to do it. Just it's fun, man. You know, but let God use you. Let God use you every day, man. God wants to flow in you and through you every day. Yeah. Amen. And Josh, if you want to throw in like a testimony, I know you said you talked to a couple people already. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Throw in a little testimony. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, you know, we've been reading a book. If y'all if y'all not in the group or whatever, I encourage every one of you, you know, just to read, reach out and read that book. Get it if you want, if you want to read it. But uh, it's a great way to unlock the true power and authority that you have, especially the first five chapters. Uh, uh, we call it, you know, killing the uh, sacred cows, man. If you really read that book and what God has called us to do in the first five chapters, man, it's who He called us to be. And, you know, uh, Christ come, died for us. He took back the keys. Well, you know, we have power and authority, you know, in uh, Luke 9 or 10, 19, it says, you know, I've given unto you the power and authority to tread on scorpions, serpents and scorpions. Right. Therefore, by any means, nothing shall hurt you. Well, uh, if you read it too, you know, we're, we're to uh, subdue things, you know. Uh, through Christ, we was that first Adam, you know, we had separation there. Right. Uh, so, through Christ, we was made just with God again. Yes, sir. Um, but we're called to walk in that authority. We're called to take back what the devil has took him, man. You know, we're called to, to subdue and uh, to have dominion over these things. Right. You know, First Genesis 1 and 28, it said, God had blessed them. God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And had dominion over all fish of the sea, and over all the fair fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So, God's telling us there that, and you know, that we're, we're reading back and forth between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Brother hey, uh, Howard, if you're watching, man, you're great. I just want to say thank you for what you've done and just the revelations you've given me. Um, but you, you know it's all about identity if we can't really understand fully who we are fully in Christ 
we we're not walking in that power and that that victory he's done pay for you know <coughs> we're, and i see a lot of times where we're, we're struggling with things because we're fighting from a a point of defeat mm. and god's like i done gave you the kingdom i done gave you the keys while we're fighting from defeat I, we I, we know what we're called to do right? right we're called to subdue we're called to have dominion over these things we're called to cast out devils we're called to reach men you know we're called to to be the arms and the legs of jesus man and without that like i said without that full identity knowing who you are in christ we're missing the mark you know mm -hmm. i know who i am i can stand up here comfortably because i know whose i am right. you know what i mean right. and the world don't tell me these things this thing right here does and if we walk in the truth we will have that power and that that uh just to set the captives free that uh that god has called us to be uh man this uh this whole thing with this uh I don't know what you want to call it, spiritual warfare deal, what, what, what do you want to call it, hey, what, theological deal we're going through, boot camp, there you go, it's, uh, <laughs> couldn't find a word, spiritual boot camp, spiritual boot camp. It, it's an eye opener, you know, the more time we spend with Christ, the more revelation we'll have of the fullness yeah. of who we are in Him, yeah. so, I and prayer, you know, prayer is a, that's how we fight our battles, man. You know, it says our, our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but in they're mighty and pulling down strongholds. So if we got a stronghold in our life, you know, that's what we, we're called to do. That's how we defeat that. You know, that's how we allow the Spirit to come in and kick that wall down and just have rain over it, you know. But uh, as we pray in... I know a lot of us uh, have problems with uh, praying as far as, you know, some have religious thoughts about speaking in tongues and everything like that, but, you know, we're caught, we're one spirit with him, and when we pray in tongues or we're praying in the spirit, just the truth of it, you know, that's God praying through us, you know, that's his will coming through us, and I just encourage it. You know, every one of us to reach out and try to touch somebody. This week, I, you know, I've gotten to touch a couple of people. Now, I don't know. I guess I was just planting seeds at that time. Uh, went to an apartment the other day, and uh, it was an Indian lady, you know. And I was listening to my music, and I started spit, you know, just talking or whatever, and amen. And, and next thing you know, she's sticking her head through the wood door like. What are you doing, you know? So I, I opened up and uh, just started sharing the Word of God with her, you know. And and it, it was kind of crazy because the Spirit started moving. And she, <coughs> she, she actually took time to stop and think about what I was really saying, you know. So uh, hopefully that seed will grow and God, give, you know, God give the increase. But uh, the night before that, I had a brother come up to me and say, Hey, man, you know, his wife... His ex <laughs> had been lost. She's still lost, you know. Uh, she's going through some hard times. She's on the street struggling. She's struggling. She's got, they, they have five kids together. Well, he reached out to me because he knows, you know, he knows the life that I live. He said, hey, man, you think you can talk to my old lady, my ex-old lady, my, my kid's mama, to see if we can't get her some help? I said, yeah, man. Sure, you know, let's hook her up. I can get her some help. I know where it comes from, <laughs> you know. Come on, come on. Just plant the seeds. By the time I got through talking to her, she had done decided, you know, this ain't this ain't for me, you know. Uh, this life that I'm living, I'm homeless, I'm struggling, uh, going through all these things. And she, she was telling me she wants to help her kids. I was like, you know, the first thing you got to do is help yourself before you can help your kids. But... By the time that conversation ended, I had done talked her into going to the Center of Hope for the 12 month program, done gave her an application. So hopefully that goes through, you know. Yeah. But reaching out and touching somebody, man, is who we're called to be. We're called to be fishers of men, you know. And I heard something the other day that when Anna's in the book we was reading, you know, Christ, he, 
He said, just push out into the deep when he was talking to Peter. He said, push out in the deep and cast your net. Well, that's, you know, me spiritually saying these things, I'm to walk <coughs> into the deep, to light that dark spot up deeper and deeper wherever we go and pull back, man, bust the net with it. However many people we can get, we need to bust that net and the people we pull in, you know, pull them into the boat, man. <laughs> let's get these people off the street. Let's get these people saved and just share the love of Christ. But... Uh, like I said, I encourage y'all to read the book. If God is good, it's not just a saying. It start believing these things that we're called in to be. You know, believe them in your heart and in your mind. Because once you get them there, you know who you are and a true identity you are in Him. So, but uh, I just encourage that man. Jesus, man, Jesus. Thank you. a couple ways so I don't get in trouble. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, I'm trouble. Get on here. Put the remote back. Who watches? Watch me. Got one eye on me. Like, like a ninja. <laughs> oh, man. Brothers, we are stepping into some exciting times. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I don't even really think we understand the fullness of what God's doing right now. We're seeing a glimpse of it. So we're pressing into revival um, in this region. Yeah. And um, God's using us. God's using us as pioneers. You know what we're doing here. And uh, man, if He needs us to pray. We we talked about pertaining to revival. We talked about um, one of the reasons why churches with uh, revival would wane out. People would begin to camp out on uh, yesterday's revelation. And God's still speaking today. Amen. Yeah, come on. God's speaking every day. Every single day speaking, uh, what you just shared about Jesus sending Peter out to cast a net. Um, you know, he had been fishing on one side of the boat all night long and didn't catch anything. And this is a professional fisherman that knows his stuff. Fished all night, didn't catch a thing, but as soon as he got instructions from Jesus, and Jesus says, Hey, cast your net over there. He got a boat sinking, net breaking, <laughs> harvest. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So there's a specific spot that, and Bobby's going out tonight. Like this spot that God's been highlighting. You know, and it's got isn't there like a hook or something over there? Let's talk about fishing. There's like a hook <laughs> hanging on the one of the hotels or the billboard or something, right? You on the billboard? Well, just that the place is called Catches. Oh, it's called Catches. Right Amen. <laughs> come on, man. Go. Yeah. And we're gonna. People are gonna come in, man. They're coming in. When we're like when God prompted us to pray before worship or during worship, man, I'm just seeing like He'll highlight somebody, and that's almost like the target, and then He'll just have me start praying in the spirit. There's only so much I can pray in the natural. Like I only know so much. That's why. I, in Romans 8, it says that He helps us to pray in our weakness. The weakness is we don't know what to pray. That's mm. right. Mm. But He does. Mm. And then there's a rest. You know, I thought it I thought it was kind of funny, like when the church was paying, praying for Peter to be set free, but when he showed up at the house, they're like, they didn't even want him to believe it was him. They're like, who are you? <laughs> Let's have an expectation, man, that our prayers are going to be answered. Amen? Amen. That our prayers are going to yield results. That's right. This ain't just something religious we're doing because you know, it, you know, we need to pray. No, this is like this is for real. We see it in the Word, man. This is real. God, God has given us examples in the Word where people prayed and people were set free, and now He's saying, "I need you to pray." Think about it. 
of all the things the disciples, and Bobby and I were talking about this a couple days ago, of all the things the disciples could have asked Jesus. They could have asked Jesus, how'd you break that bread and feed all them people? How'd you raise Lazarus from the dead? How'd you walk on water? They didn't ask Him any of those things. You know what they asked Him? It was great. Teach us how to pray. You know why? Because they knew that was the key to multiplying the fish, to walking on water, to raising the dead. He had a lifestyle of prayer. Right? He would sneak away to be with the Father. Remember when he came down off the mountain? <coughs> and disciples were, they couldn't cast the demon out. And he says, this kind only comes out by what? Prayer and, Prayer and fasting. Now, he cast the devil out, right? You know what that tells me? He had a culture of prayer. <coughs> so it wasn't like, let me stop and fast and pray real quick so I can cast this demon out. No, he was already flowing in that culture. Right? Yeah. He had a resident anointing on his life. He was always there. <coughs> as soon as the Father told him to do something, you know, first he was listening. Right, and I was telling Bobby, Bobby and I yesterday, we're having fun, man. We went to a little pastor's meeting. <laughs> went to a little pastor's meeting, and then we're like, man, let's go pray for some people. And uh, so we're out, and I want, and I wanted to give you all this little piece because I feel like it's important. When you guys go out tonight, or, or whenever you you go out, maybe during the day today, don't forget to be intentional and think. Because it's so easy to get distracted. And I got distracted yesterday. Because I knew we were about to pray for this lady. Because we had already been ministering to her at the Dollar General. And we moved down to the end of the aisle. And we're waiting on her to finish with this customer. And Bobby is like fully engaged. I'm looking at it. Because I like, I grabbed my phone. You know. <laughs> so I had a couple hits on Facebook. All right, let's see who this is started to show Bobby something and Bobby just kind of like he kind of glanced at it but I saw him he was praying under his breath and he's just looking at her because he why because he's waiting to get a word from the father which is something we just talked about right a couple days ago me and Josh were talking about let's be more intentional that's right and I told him when we went outside I said man I, I you know thank you because you made me realize that I was focused on the wrong thing because it's so easy to, to get distracted and lose focus. But watching him, that's why it's good to go out in pairs, right? Because when the other one might be, I'm not going to say long and short, but when the other one might get distracted or maybe one's ministering uh, and, and maybe they, they're they finished praying or they're finished saying everything they had to say, then the other one can come in and work together. Or like with Bobby... I realized something that I needed to do. I needed to be more focused. I needed to be more intentional. And I needed to pay attention to what the Lord wanted to say to this woman. And I'm telling you, like, you know, the Lord showed Bobby her tattoo, something that it said, and, and gave him a word. And he shared it. And she started, she started weeping. And then I started getting dialed in on the flow. And the Lord gave me a little word. And then next thing you know, she's just like boohooing right there in the store. Like, and she was like, I needed that. Amen. And I really feel like that's going to pull her back into that closeness, that first love, where she can get back dialed in and, and do what she needs to do as a, as a woman of God. Amen? Amen? So think about that as you go out today and as you go out this evening or whenever the next time you go out and you begin to minister to people, pay attention, man. Listen. Listen to what the Holy Spirit's saying. You know, because He's always wanting to deliver. He's always wanting to heal. He's always wanting to set free. Always. Jesus said the Spirit is willing, right? The Spirit is always willing. It's just us that gets in the way. The flesh is weak. The Spirit's always willing. Yeah. 
And even when it comes to flowing in the giftings, we said this uh, the last time I spoke on Tuesday, that a lot of times as people, we like to focus on the gifting first. What am I called to be? Well, let's focus on this prayer first and allow God to work on my character. So I can sustain the gift. Right? So I don't get in the gift and I think it's, you know, get the big head and think it's all about me or, you know. But I realize that, wow, man, God loves me in the same way He loves me. He loves this person that's standing in front of me. And that's what it's all about. For God so loved the world that He gave. Right? For the joy that was set before Him, Jesus. What was the joy set before Him? Look around. The harvest. He endured the cross. That person in front of you at the grocery store, that person in front of you at the gas station, that person in front of you at the Walmart, that was the joy that was set before him. And as he begin, as we begin to enter this culture of prayer, he's going to begin to really strengthen us in our hearts. And that love of God that's been shed abroad in our heart is going to begin to expand and it's going to begin to get bigger and it's going to begin to get stronger. And our focus on people is just going to begin to get hypersensitive. And when we get our eyes off of ourselves and we get our eyes on others, then God will use us in a radical way. And then there'll be, I'm telling you, there's no true fulfillment until you're stepping right into God's purpose for your life. That's where fulfillment is. That's where contentment is. And God wants to do that in and through each and every one of our lives. Bobby, you got anything about tonight real quick? Uh, just if you want to go and you don't have my number, get my number and text or something to all today. I'm just going to go get some Lunchables and then go to a couple of hotels. See what the Lord does. It'll be fun. And no pressure to if... Uh, just because I'm about to put a lot of stuff on the schedule, they're just opportunities. And I've told a couple guys, I would prefer that you just pick one. Because we all work so much. Just pick one and be intentional about being faithful with it. Alright? I love y'all. What's up? Uh, everybody knows John. Yeah. You know, I, well, I just took him out to Kentucky last week. You know, uh, I talked with them, the taking guy. And, uh, you know, if you are willing, if you know him personally, and stuff, you know, if you're willing to write a letter and stuff, just turn it in to me or Chris or, something, uh, or Josh or Pam so that we can, you know, collect them all and send them to them. Just a word of encouragement, you know. Yeah. Amen. Because that, that goes a long way. Okay. Anybody know John Green? Let's, let's write him a letter, man. Maybe grab a card or something. Anybody got one? Amen. Amen. Anybody else got anything? My mom just had knee surgery. Okay. Uh, she got out of the hospital last night. Uh, this is the second one she had. The first one, she didn't do very good recovering. Okay. So hopefully it goes better this time. Okay. Thank you. Kenny Bob had knee surgery. Pray for my brother. He's got some diabetes issues. Mm -hmm. Things going on with that. Thanks, brother. Mm -hmm. Let's pray for John uh, Coach. No, go ahead. You know John that. Coach? Yeah. Let's yeah, he fell off the roof. Yeah, 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 he fell off the roof last yeah, Friday. Yeah. He just got out of the I talked to some of the guys. They said he got out of the hospital like it was Tuesday. But he, he's not walking, you know what I'm saying? Because he messed up his hip and leg. Damn. Okay. My mom's test results. She was to go have some secondary uh, heart checks yesterday, so they're gonna wait to see what they have to figure out now. She's kind of uh, past the point of being able to pick back up where they were with her pre-existing heart issues before the COVID stuff. So hopefully they'll be able to progress with that now. Okay. She's uh, she's uh, she'll be driving by the end of next month. Awesome. Okay. So gotcha. Hey guys, too, seriously, man, like, 
I don't know if y'all sense it, but anytime, and I know I, I probably sound like a broken record, but anytime we start pressing into revival, <laughs> the enemy hates it. Yeah. He's going to start coming against marriages. He's going to start attacking our minds. He's going to throw temptation out there. I mean, he knows what everybody, I mean, he'll even try to attack your physical body. So, man, let's keep one another lifted up. Yeah. And, and you know it's important that we that we engage with the Lord every day because we need that protection. Amen. We want to have that protection, and and I you know get in the Word, man. Get in the Word. Jump on board with what we're doing. Um, get into like Psalm ninety one and find out what it looks like the protection of the Lord that He promises the believer. We're gonna need it, man. We're gonna need it. This this cra- there's some crazy stuff out there. You know I don't even think we I think. When we finally make it to heaven, like if he was to show us all the times that he protected us, we'd probably freak out, man. Yeah. <laughs> like seriously. Like I sit back sometimes and watch my little kids and I'm like, wow. Thank thank God for angels, you know? And I think about some of the dangerous situations we're in, man, and God just has his hand on us, you know? Uh, even tonight going out, man, let's keep these groups prayed up. For real. Because there's some, you know, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. And the demonic, they, the demonic hates the word. The demonic hates the word. It's nothing personal, right? It's nothing personal against us. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We got to remember that. But let's keep these groups prayed up as they go out. Seriously. Yeah, that that's like one of the biggest things is we don't have to go unless you feel called to go. Like pray, you know. There's plenty of opportunities to do stuff. You know what I mean? There'll be plenty of future things to do. Don't force yourself. There's going to be all kinds of schedules. The zeal is great. The passion that you shared this morning gets me fired up. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, let's go. But it's been blow after blow and stepping into spiritual warfare. And I've been transparent about my own stuff. Like, you know, a year and a half ago, two years ago, got blindsided by the enemy. You know what I mean? And made some bad decisions. When we make bad decisions and get tempted by the enemy, it affects our ability to perceive our intimacy with the Lord. So then we just kind of go on autopilot and we get, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's who we're going to save anyway. Like, the chain breaker, like these people that we were praying for this morning are people just like us. They got moving too fast, got distracted, didn't use wisdom, didn't cultivate intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And now we pull up on them, and they used to be a preacher, and they're in bondage, and it's a, it's it's yeah. challenging. So let's just don't try and force yourself to do anything. God loves us. He's 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 not a harsh taskmaster. We're His sons. So, all right. All right. Love y'all. No Real pressure. quick, I want to I want to pray while I'm still thinking about it. Um, Father God, we're just grateful for the opportunity to pray. And we're glad that you're uh, not some far off God that doesn't care and doesn't listen, but you do listen. You do care and you do respond to our prayers. So we just want to thank you in advance. And Father, uh, I lift up all these requests. Request, uh, Brother Frank, uh, was it your brother Frank? Frank has a diabetic issue. Um, as all sickness, we come against it in Jesus' name. Uh, we, we know you hate sickness and so do we. And we just curse that sickness right now in Jesus' name, that, that diabetes, and we just speak healing over Frank's brother. We lift up Kenny's mom that's recovering from knee surgery. Father God, I thank you that her knee, the, this recovery is going to be successful and that her knee is going to be stronger than ever. Father, I pray that you give her grace as she goes through, that you give her comfort and peace in Jesus' name. Father God, we lift up Chris Ox, uh, mother, as she... Uh, Begins to, they begin to take a look at her heart again after her, her uh, recovery from COVID. <coughs> Father, I just pray that her heart, Lord, and everything on her uh, path to success with her heart will be a success. And we just thank you in advance for that. Father God, we lift up Brother Sean Coons. Father God, who just fell <coughs> and hurt his leg, and he just had surgery on his leg and hip. And we just thank you right now for a uh, perfect recovery in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up our brother Ryan Smallwood uh, that um, just found out some, some news that wasn't so exciting. And we just know that uh, 
the heart of the king is in your hand, and like rivers of water, you turn it, Lord. So we just pray for favor in that situation in Ryan's life. And Father, we just pray for all the teams and all the crews uh, that are getting ready to go out this weekend, today, um, tonight, to bring your kingdom and bring your gospel. Father, I pray that there would be a holy boldness. Uh, I pray that there would be a consecration of our lives, Father, and our hearts and our minds just solely on you, that we'd be separated and set apart unto you as we are. I thank you right now in advance for working in us and through us everywhere that we go. And Father, we just bless your name today as we get ready to take communion. And we just want to say thank you for your body. Thank you for giving your body. And you said as often as we do this, do this in remembrance of you. So right now, let's just put our minds on Jesus. Lord, thank you. Everybody just say thank you. Thank you, you, Jesus. You gave your body, and it was broken. You took on the curse so that we could be set free from the curse. And part of the curse is sickness, disease, death. And we just say right now, by your stripes, we're healed. By your stripes, we're healed. By your stripes, we're healed. And we just say thank you for that. In Jesus' name, take the bread. Thank you for your blood. That's crying out better things. We're so thankful that we haven't received what we deserve. Because if we got what we deserve, we'd all be in hell. So thank you for... Your blood that cries out mercy. Thank you for your blood that cries out grace. Thank you for your blood that cries out peace. Thank you for your blood that cries out intimacy. Thank you for your blood that tore the veil. That gave us access into your presence. Thank you for your your blood that has given us a righteous consciousness. A righteous consciousness. That we no longer have a sin consciousness, but a righteous consciousness. Not because of what we did, but because of what you did. Thank you for the blood. Mm. Love you guys. Give them a bobby. If you want to go out this weekend. Not have a great day. Have a great weekend. (laughs) Never no pressure.